Hi, and welcome to our 9 a.m. press conference, Improving Gender Equity in the Geosciences. Our speakers today are Laura Connor from the University of Alaska Fairbanks and Joanna Young, also from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking the time to hear us talk this morning. We're really going to be talking today about two programs that bring girls into science prior to college. And so we know that there are different problems depending on what level um, you're talking about, whether it be college or, or at a younger age. But today we're going to be focusing on the specific problem up here, which is that girls often lose interest in science well before they ever reach college age. So by middle school, girls often report that they're disconnected from school science. Um, they perceive that the content of the school science and the, way that it's, and the way that it's enacted is often irrelevant to their daily lives and concerns. They often report in the literature that science to them seems rote, passionless, and uncreative. Um, and as scientists, of course, we know that science is quite creative, so we'd like to dispel that notion. Um, there's an even stronger disconnect for underrepresented ethnic groups. So I'm going to talk first about the program that I run, which is Colors of Nature. And our approach here is we offer a summer program for middle school girls that integrates biology, chemistry, and optics with visual arts. And so we do know from the literature that girls tend to like biology and careers that um, have a social aspect or a helping aspect. This was, uh, it's been well documented in a few review papers. Uh, so we actually are able to use that interest in biology and this interest in art. We select art-interested girls, and we're trying to figure out whether we can leverage some of those connections to raise interest in science. A couple of things that we really focus on in this program, which I'll get into in a minute, are really true integration. We really want the girls to engage deeply in the practices of art and science. Um, we leverage science content to, create personally to have the girls create personally relevant art. And so we really want to um, hammer home that connection to why is this relevant to you. And also we really focus on giving the girls agency over their own work, which is another name for learner control, really. So some of the key research findings, we've been doing the Colors of Nature program for about five years. And our external evaluation is documented um, through some pre and post surveys, so significant increases in attitude about science, self-concept of science ability, interest in science, and knowledge about the nature of science. We also have a research team that takes a more qualitative approach, um, doing a lot of interviews with the girls. And we really have been able to document that this approach of adding art to science in an authentic way um, does support STEM-related identity development in middle school girls. And via being able to emerge to their, being able to connect to their already emerging um, art identities. So some practices that frame our work. One thing that we really like to do is focus on open exploration. And so in school science, girls, or girls and boys, are often constrained um, to do things in a way that is prescribed rather than open-ended. So we really focus on open-ended exploration in the context of science and art. So here we have some girls doing some uh, ex explorations with acid and base re reactions, and then they go on to make a painting out of a color palette that they develop. As I mentioned before, we really focus on this idea of leveraging science concepts to create artwork with a personal or aesthetic meaning. So one thing that we do is we have the girls do a big project where they create costumes of their own. And the costumes are based on biological functions of color. So they have to think about whether it's mimicry or camouflage or something like that. They can pick a real or imaginary animal. So they, get, they have a lot of learner control or agency over their choices. They um, decide how they want to approach this. And then they think about whether the color is structural or whether it's pigment. So we get into some of the um, optical sciences with this project as well. Another really important practice that we think um, should be included in all STEAM work, or the idea of integrating science and art, is this idea of designing with intention. So uh, what we see sometimes in STEAM is that the art is almost accidental. And so we really focus on making intentional choices around your artwork. So choices around medium, technique, composition, other choices like that. 
And then finally, we focus on iterating your work and communicating about it to authentic audiences. And so these, of course, are both science and art practices. And we emphasize that to the girls as well, that there is overlap between science and art. So overall, it gives the girls an idea that science is more creative than rote and passionless and uncreative. <laughs> And so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Joanna. I'm wondering about jumping up there so I can see the sure. screen. You can stay there. I'll just okay. move over here. Maybe. Does that work OK? Am I on? Good. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, so I am uh, Joanna Young. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And one of the program leads for a program called Girls on Ice. And uh, Girls on Ice is a program that offers an authentic field experience to its participants. Um, our approach is that Girls on Ice is a free, unique uh, mountaineering and science experience for high school girls. They're aged 16 to 17. And there are two programs, uh, one in Washington State and one in Alaska. And every year we take out a team of nine girls uh, for about eight days onto a glacier. Uh, where we teach them about climate change, uh, the alpine landscape, uh, mountaineering, and um, leadership skills as well. Uh, girls on Ice is a completely free program for the girls. We're mostly grant funded. Um, and with that, we're able to target girls who wouldn't normally have an opportunity to do something like this. So whether it's extracurricular activities or exploring science outside of the classroom. Uh, we're also sure to target uh, girls from a diversity of different backgrounds, um, ethnic and cultural backgrounds, interests and hobbies, uh, family histories, uh, personalities. Uh, so we try to have a real diversity of girls. Um, and overall, the girls will spend 12 days in total with a team of four instructors who are professional glaciologists, mountaineers, artists, and ecologists. So in a recent study on the impacts of Girls on Ice, um, we came up with some key findings. And uh, one of the first ones is that girls who participated in the program reported that they had increased their physical self-confidence as a result of the program. So on Girls on Ice, the girls have an opportunity to really push themselves into a new domain in the physical realm. Um, we take the girls on long, strenuous day hikes um, and often take them even to the top of a local summit. And uh, along the way, they're taught the skills of mountaineering and glacier travel and glacier crevasse rescue and technical climbing skills that allow them to navigate through the terrain. And the girls often report that um, experiencing those new skills and having the challenge of these big physical days that require a lot of physical um, and mental stamina are one of the most um, rewarding parts of the trip for them. We also found that the girls uh, increased their environmental ethic, and that was a result of uh, instructors role modeling and talking extensively about uh, different practices in leave no trace, so how to spend time in the backcountry without leaving human impact, and I'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, we also found that the girls were able to replace some of their stereotypical ideas about science and scientists. Um, as Laura mentioned earlier, girls often report thinking that science is done uh, in a very rote, repetitive way, and that scientists are um, people who, who do that kind of work very focused. Um, and what the girls learned as a result of the program was that science can be an adventure. And they reported feeling that, uh, or really connecting with uh, the aspects of travel and exploration um, that we demonstrated in Girls on Ice. Um, they also learned that scientists are people who are very passionate about their work and use really creative tactics to uh, come up with program or uh, experimental design and to collect their data. So overall, the program really helped girls to connect uh, their existing identities to science. So as a result of seeing what authentic field science looks like, the girls were able to um, better connect it personally to what they experience in their lives. So some practices that frame our work, uh, we provide an immersive, authentic field science experience. So as I mentioned, um, the girls learn all of the travel skills for the outdoors that they need to get through the mountain terrain. 
Um, and they use those to design a, an experiment of their own choosing and to go out and collect data. And uh, over the course of the eight days that we're out there, the girls will collect data and see that, you know, science in the field doesn't always go exactly as you want it to, and things change, weather changes, the conditions might impede you from getting the data you want. So they um, personally experience what it's like to have to change your plans and come up with a different creative approach to getting the data that they want. Uh, we also include, as I mentioned, mental and physical challenges for the girls. <coughs> and those include um, long days that are very arduous, that involve strenuous day hikes into um, really different terrain than most of the girls have encountered before. And um, as I mentioned, many of the girls report that these um, big pushes, the big summit days, the long strenuous hikes, um, where they're kind of uncomfortable and the weather is not great and um, they're just thinking about their warm sleeping bag are the moments that they end up thinking back on the most and feeling were the most rewarding for them. We also demonstrate shared leadership in Girls on Ice. So this is not um, a program that models sort of a top-down management approach to leadership, but a more collaborative and participatory participatory um, kind of leadership. And the way we demonstrate that is um, at the instructor level, even though I might be a glaciologist and my colleague might be an artist, we'll sometimes switch roles up and teach different modules and um, talk very openly with the girls about how we do that for the sake of all of us instructors having an opportunity to grow and learn in a different field. Um, the girls also get to try out different leadership roles throughout the program, uh, whether it's being the head chef for the day or uh, the naturalist of the day, uh, safety lead for the day. And so they'll take on responsibilities like waking people up in the morning, um, being the cook, and uh, perhaps getting water for the whole group or doing some other um, safety activity for the whole group. Uh, and the girls report that that was um, seeing shared leadership in this, in this realm um, really made them open their eyes to the idea that a good leader is someone who makes everyone on the team feel safe, encouraged, and confident. And lastly, we demonstrate uh, an environmental ethic on the program that the girls uh, report really um, feeling uh, that they learn a lot from. And uh, what that looks like is uh, that we practice the highest standards for um, for being in the backcountry in terms of human waste removal. And uh, that's the leave no trace ethic. And so we, um, as instructors, talk them through how we handle waste in the field, and that includes human waste. Um, and so we carry out with us down the mountain everything that we generate in terms of waste over the eight days. And we talk very openly with them about um, why we do that and how um, waste is not easily broken down in a glacier environment because it's icy and cold. And uh, we have evening discussions as well about the role of humans in the environment and the role of humans in the global ecosystem as well. So just to summarize, uh, Laura and I had a couple of take-home tips that we think are some of the best practices for helping increase girls' science interest. Um, one of those is, as we talked about, to provide authentic science experiences where girls really get to see what science outside of the classroom can look like. Uh, it's important to connect science to everyday life as well, so to make these scientific practices and experiments and findings um, relevant to the girls and their own lives and um, ultimately connecting it back to what's important to them. And finally, we like to position students as experts and agents of their own learning and uh, really give them autonomy to design experiments and explore on their own and ask questions and be curious. Thank you. We'll take questions. Um, oh, are there any uh, questions from reporters in the room? Please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. Hi, um, my name is Liz Callagher. I'm from Environmental Research Web. Um, both your programs look absolutely fascinating, but obviously you're only reaching a small number of people. Could you talk about how that could be extended to reach more people? I can, I can tackle that to start. Um, 
We are a small program, uh, Girls on Ice for the past. Um, it's been running since 1999 as a single program and in 2012 started a second one. Um, what's really exciting is that word of mouth about the program is really starting to get out and we're hearing from a lot of women who want to get involved and start programs of their own. And so this past summer we actually had four different programs, um, not all Girls on Ice, not all girls on a glacier, um, but starting to expand into a sea kayaking version that talks about um, the ice field to ocean estuary system. And um, this coming summer will be up to possibly five or six programs, one of them being called Girls on Rock, which will be a rock climbing uh, expedition in Colorado, um, talking about desert geology and things like this. Um, so we'll, we'll still be limited to maybe five or six programs and we're limited not by interest but by funding primarily um, and, and all the work that it takes to run a program for free for the girls. Um, and so in answer to your question, I, I think word of mouth is a really powerful way to, um, to expand programs like this and to show people um, that this kind of thing does have an impact. Um, the research that Laura is doing really shows that. Um, and, uh, and that, yeah, I think it's important just to continue working as we can to develop more programs. Well, and another thing that we are doing in our work is we have moved into a level of sort of training, training the trainers. Um, and so we work with both informal educators and K through 12 educators to try to instill some of our principles. And so although then the individuals that are working with the teachers obviously don't get the two week camp experience, they're still working with teachers who have learned a lot about uh, techniques to develop science identity. I think that I work with a fabulous group of teachers um, I think that in general, teachers are, are, um, teachers are just amazing. <laughs> and, but what we're able to do is provide this context of what informal learning can look like when brought to the classroom. So that's a way to spread some of this as well. Are there any other questions? Hi, I'm Josh Nacker with Earth Magazine. Um, you may have touched on this a little bit, but can you expand on uh, how you guys recruit for this uh, to be able to go on the trip, and then maybe specifically um, connections to things like underrepresented communities, because a lot of uh, some of the differentiation between those things is, is experiences like this in your youth and being able to actually access stuff like this. So can you speak a little bit to um, maybe a focus on that or considerations, things of that nature? Are you asking about one of the programs specifically or both? Okay, yeah, sure. So for Colors of Nature, the programs that we did for the five years of the first grant funding that we had, we, we, had, we recruited 30 girls in Tucson. We, we did the, I forgot to mention that, we have the program in two spots, one in Fairbanks, Alaska, and one in Tucson, Arizona. And so our recruitment really, well, we started at schools. And we, did, we do have a focus on trying to recruit, um, well, diversity in general, socioeconomic. Uh, diversity was really important to us, and so we asked the girls to fill out an online application. For Colors of Nature, because we were actually researching this idea of whether we could uh, connect to girls' art identities, um, we asked the, we had the girls do a short art interest survey on the application, so that was a big factor in trying to select girls who did have an existing interest in art, uh, because that was the research focus. So that was part of it, but a lot of it was, you know, it wasn't based on grades or um, achievement. It was really based on um, very short answers to, you know, why do you want to come and what's unique about you? And, you know, of course, it's, it's so fun to read those answers at this young age. Um, so we did, we, have a, we had a big focus on socioeconomic diversity and ethnic and cultural diversity. Ours is not an overnight camp, and so we had to recruit locally in both cases. But we tried to make sure that we were um, getting the word out to teachers that worked at schools that had a really diverse uh, student population. And for Girls on Ice, um, the Alaska program is mostly centered on trying to target Alaska girls um, because of the source of funding that we get. Um, but we also reach out to the Pacific Northwest of Canada and the US as well. And the Washington program is really open to girls from all over the world, although typically it ends up being North American girls with perhaps one um, overseas girl. Um, and. Uh, 
Our application, in, in a similar respect to Laura, has a bunch of open-ended sort of essay questions that aim at gauging like what a regular day and weekend looks like for each of the girls. You know, what's, what's your typical weekend like? Um, what other questions we have? Uh, questions about art interest and science interest. Um, and we also request to teacher recommendation forms a lot um, as well, and those can reveal a lot in terms of um, details about the girls' lives that we don't necessarily see in their own applications. Um, we do have them fill out some uh, demographics for the sake of NSF reporting more than anything, um, but that also helps us to select a real diversity of girls. And so the way we describe the application process is that we're not picking any one girl in particular, but trying to build the team as a whole. And so really trying to get diversity across all of the different um, ways that humans can be diverse. And um, as Laura mentioned as well, Girls on Ice is really um, not a reward for past academic success. So we don't ask anything about the girls' grades. What we're interested in is, do you have a passion? What's it for? And why do you think you'd benefit from a program like this? And some of the answers can just be really astounding. And, and, and that's really what we're looking for more than anything. Are there any other questions from reporters in the room? Catherine White from Physics. Uh, so you mentioned that the girls leave doing either of these courses, um, having changed some of their stereotype ideas about girls and science or some of their biases. Um, have you looked any further afield to see whether a larger fraction of these girls do go on to, say, study science in high school or in college or develop careers in science? Well, for our girls, a lot of them are just entering high school now, and so we haven't done longitudinal tracking in terms of course selection and that kind of thing. We have tried to stay in touch with parents and done some uh, parent surveys, and, and we're, we're just getting into doing follow-up surveys right now with the girls themselves. We, um, because we work in the community, I actually see parents frequently, and informally I've heard a lot of parents report that this uh, experience, the Colors of Nature experience, was foundational in getting their girls to be more interested in science and to, and to really do a lot of science outside of school. Um, in, in Fairbanks, at least, a lot of the, th there's some course choice that you can have in, in high school, but it's fairly constrained, and so course choice isn't necessarily a good indicator at that age. So we're, if we really want to know what they're choosing in terms of um, a formal learning environment, we'd have to wait till they get to college. So. So we don't have that data at this point for Colors of Nature girls. But. For Girls on Ice, we have a bit more of a long-term record. The program did start in 99 in a little bit of a different format then. Um, and Laura was actually program evaluator for a five-year period, or maybe shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and during that period, got some very specific data on, um, on where the girls end up after the program. The rest of it is more informal in the same way. Um, we run into girls and parents in the community as well and hear from them via email and different social media too. Um, we try to encourage a long-term mentoring relationship with the girls too, so we're, we're often in touch with them for letters of recommendation or advice and things like that. And so we can, um, especially with some girls, really hear a lot about where they end up in their careers. And um, I would say ending up in science isn't necessarily the absolute goal of Girls on Ice, although it's a wonderful one, um, but more opening girls' eyes to different opportunities that are available to them. So if, if they do find an interest in science, fantastic, and we can encourage that. We can also encourage um, them to pursue other interests as well. Um, but in terms of science specifically, we have seen several girls go into science programs in college. Um, we have a girl at UAF right now who um, is, is, was really fascinated with wildlife biology while we were out on the program um, with a wildlife biologist as one of the instructors, and now she's in that field. Um, we have another girl pursuing a PhD in glaciology specifically, so um, it's hard to imagine that she didn't stumble across that field because of the program. Uh, so we do hear about um, pursuing careers in science beyond Girls on Ice, for sure. And, and, and hear reports from the girls that the program um, was really what, what prompted them into exploring that field further. 
I just want to note, though, that that is actually one of the challenges of our work, is that generally it's grant funded, and so you're on a four-year cycle, mm -hmm. and so actually conducting that longitudinal tracking can be really difficult over time, and that's, mm -hmm. that's just an artifact of the funding system. Are there other questions from reporters in the room? Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Hi, um, apologies for having another question. Um, do you have much feeling for whether other sciences or how other sciences could do this sort of program? Um, so you mean beyond, so our, our, our program is pretty integrative across a lot of different fields. Um, we try deliberately to integrate optical science with biology and art. Are you thinking more in terms of the girls on ice? Um, wilderness experience in terms of other disciplines or? Um, yeah, I just think generally sort of border into say maths, chemistry, physics as a whole, but for both of you, yeah. Yeah, that, for Colors of Nature, that's actually one of the things we deliberately do because as we underrepresentation in the sciences, you know, biology's almost reach parity at least at the undergraduate level. When we start looking um, at around the postdoctoral level, in science in general, there's a whole different set of things going on there. But in terms of getting girls into science in the first place, biology is just about reach parity at this point, which is really exciting. Um, we know that some of the physical sciences and engineering and computer science are much more underrepresented, of course, with respect to females. Uh, and so that's one of the things that we deliberately incorporated was trying, optical science is a tough area and is pretty underrepresented. Uh, with respect to females' participation. And so that was something we deliberately incorporated. And because of girls' documented interest in biology, we open with biology. So we started by thinking about, you know, why do animals have particular colors? And those are sort of those big questions. And then we got in, and so looking at the biological reasons for that, and then getting into the how, more on the physics side. And that seems to be, um, a good strategy, actually. We have a, a couple other programs. Well, one other program that is deliberately integrating biology with geosciences as well. And so I, I'm a big fan of that strategy. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in Girls on Ice, one of the things we try to do very explicitly is to talk about seeing the world through different lenses. And um, I think having four different instructors, three or four instructors, who all have different sort of professional areas of expertise, so whether one's a glaciologist and one is an ecologist and another is a mountain guide, um, we can talk about the same landscape through those different lenses. And that, um, I think, brings out the really interdisciplinary nature of of science and seeing the world in different ways. So you can, for example, we'll look at the same mountain slope and um, a glaciologist will ask the questions like, why did that come to be? Why is it shaped like that? Where did that rock come from in the first place? Um, an ecologist might see uh, different vegetation growing on the hillside and think about the animals that are using that space as a travel corridor. Um, and a mountaineer might be able to pick a very particular route through and over the rock to be able to get to the other side of the ridge. Um, we've also had a very math-loving um, math instructor before who's walked some of the girls through different ways that you can use math to answer some of the questions that they come up with about um, for example, how much meltwater is being generated in this stream that's rushing off the glacier. So I think that I think there are always ways to integrate um, different different modes of thinking and different ways to ask questions and different fields into into programs like this and, and kind of ask questions that explore um, through different lenses. Are there any other questions? No, are there any questions on the chat? No. Okay, great. This concludes our workshop. Thank you very much.